to order the Police Commission special meeting on Monday, August 23rd at 5.32 p.m. Let's start with pledge. Received from a resident's daughter for Officer Holt. Officer Holt responded to a call where a resident passed away. The resident's daughter stated that Officer Holt displayed the traits she believed the chief would want in every police officer. Dignity, respect, professionalism, and compassion. From a resident for Officer Cruz and Lieutenant Semselski. The resident's wife was having a manic episode and was seeking help. Officer Cruz and Lieutenant Samsalski responded and proposed possible solutions. State crisis intervention agents arrived and were able to assist. The resident was grateful to have competent, professional, and genuine officers respond and address the situation. We see from a resident for PFC Gray. PFC Gray was out patrolling and stopped to say hi to the resident and his four-year-old son. It was a positive interaction and experience for him and his son. He was highly complimentary of PFC Gray and the department. And that's all of the letters. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda is the approval for the July 12th, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? I motion to uh, approve the meeting the, uh, minutes from the last meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have discussion? Yeah, I, I was just uh, wondering because I went through the minutes and uh, found a, uh, a discussion under public audience that uh, bothered me so much. So I went back and I <coughs> reviewed the uh, history of it and I find that the, the complainant uh, also had at least two other complaints in the past several months on the same subject. And uh, I know they've been reviewed by the department a few times and reviewed by at least one of our other commissioners. And so I went back and looked at my notes again and, and uh, concluded that, you know, everything was done appropriately that was supposed to have been done. And, uh, you know, I can only conclude that the comments that were made were, you know, either done with complete disregard for the truth or, or with malice or, or just with, uh, I'm not sure what, but it's, uh, I think it's important that we recognize that kind of a situation and not let it just pass. So I just wanted to make that comment with regard to the, the last minutes, because I'm not sure where else it might turn up tonight. I appreciate that. Um, I don't want our public audience to change from a bully pulpit to a pulpit where we bully our officers or our commissioners or anybody else. That's absolutely unacceptable. Amen. I agree. Um, any other discussion on the, on the minutes? In that case, um, all in favor of approving the minutes from the July 12th, 2021 regular meeting, say aye. 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 The next item on the agenda is public audience. Do we have any members of the public audience that would like to speak? Yeah. Please state your name and Jill. your address for the record. Jill Cole, 26 Whitcomb Drive. Excuse me, excuse me. Okay. I recently reviewed the Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between Town Manager Maria Capriola and the Police Commission that was confirmed excuse by the me. Police Commission and the Board of Selectmen. Could you please cover your nose and wear your mask appropriately? Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, that was confirmed by the Police Commission and the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen approved the MOU on November 9, 2020. It appears that the MOU was initiated as a result of the firing by Chief Bolter of Sergeant Trumley for being untruthful. As a result of Town Manager Marie Caprioli's abuse of power and unlimited control of town government, Commissioner Jim Fleming resigned from the commission after many years of service, stating he believes 
quote, in the rule of law. The management of the police department is now assigned to town manager Maria Caproli under the non-binding <coughs> MOU. The police commission was added to the town charter many decades ago, with the police commission managing the activities of the police department. Over the years, the Commissioner Mike Long, along with the police commissioners, became a political entity, with Commissioner Mike Long pulling the strings with almost daily visits to Chief Bolton. Commissioner Mike Long was given the code with entry to the police department where he can gain access at will. It was Commissioner Mike Long, along with the police commissioners, that gave Chief Bolter a large salary increase mid-year prior to becoming chief. When it came time for Chief Ingerson to retire, it was alleged that Commissioner Mike Long wanted Nick Spolter as chief. Another well-credentialed officer was, quote, thrown under the bus, end quote, before he applied, leaving Bolter as the chosen one. Now that town manager Maria Capriola has taken over the management of the police department with the non-binding MOU, Mike Long will have to play, quote, second fiddle to town manager Maria Capriola. Chief Bolta is now accountable to town manager Maria Capriola and to a lesser degree, Commissioner Long and the police commissioners. Commissioner Mike Long and the police commissioners have turned over their legally authorized mandates to town manager Maria Capriola. Under the management of town manager Maria Capriola, the next chapter revision, charter revision, excuse me, the next charter revision will eliminate the police commission and revert the oversight of the police department to the board of selectmen, while the chief of police reports directly to town manager. All of my comments will be posted on <coughs> Simsbury Patch, Twitter at Joan Co., and Facebook. Thank you for listening. The next item on our agenda is old business, September feast update. I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Grant. Um, thank you. So we have been in um, talk with the Simsbury Meadows. Um, they are going to to publicize that was um, the police department will be um, stuff and have a cruiser there on site so that we can stuff um, a cruiser with it was originally non perishable items but they no longer need any um, food um, or pet food so um, your suggestion of just saying just to go to the website to um, to see what the town needs with is great um, so that's been done the flyer has been drafted already and sent out to you guys to review um, so once that's out, we can um, start posting that on our social media pages. Um, earlier, I sent out a, an, an email um, requesting for the commissioners to sign up um, at the time for that. So at this point, we have you and Commissioner Long, so you mean uh, Commissioner Parker, um, and Commissioner Long who have signed up for Friday, so now we just have to um, tackle Saturday. So I can do any time on Saturday because I'm off, so. Thanks for sending it out. I'll, I'll uh, have my name on the list. I just need to check the calendar. Okay. And that's it. That's the only update that we have so far. I'll have to check with the family to make sure it's okay for me to do that. Well, I'll, I'll do that. May, may I add? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we will still accept your non perishable goods, but <coughs> in speaking with social services today, they said that we need right now and up through uh, September 10th and 11th, when September feast is, is other, uh, other items, mm -hmm. hygiene, items, cleaning supplies, stuff right. like that. Um, just want to, you know, encourage people to be cautious about their cleaning supplies because we don't want, you know, mixed chemicals and things like that, but, you know, dish detergent, laundry detergent, things like that. Um, Social Services does have a nice list of um, items on, on their website. And we will have a cruiser there. It will be highly marked. Um, hopefully we'll be using our variable message sign that will say, um, you know, stuff our cruiser here and we'll make arrangements with social services that hopefully we'll stop that cruiser several times and then you know transition that to a safe place to store it until we can get to the right place on that uh, Monday. But I think it's a, a fantastic opportunity and we're looking forward to it. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda are the reports, starting with the chairperson's report. Uh, I wanted to let the commission know that as of today, these minutes we just approved, you will be getting a mailed copy of the officially signed minutes. So be on the lookout for that. 
Um, I also wanted to let you all know that on Friday, uh, I, along with the Deputy Chief, attended the Board of Select meeting where the town manager presented her mask mandate for the town. And uh, we are continuing to be the enforcement entity of that mandate. And I just, part of my, my gut clenches for you all having to be out on the front lines of that because that's, it seems like it's a hot topic right now. So my thoughts are with you guys and I hope that it's like our first rollout where it's very smooth and we don't have a lot of confrontation. Uh, and then the third item, I wanted to thank everybody tonight for your flexibility on rescheduling and also to moving up here for our meeting. Uh, we relocated because with the public audience attending our meetings, uh, there's concern, some concerns about privacy of victims who might be coming into the department or what, um, what's out and about. So I just wanted to let you guys know that is one of the reasons we moved up here right now for this meeting and something we need to go forth and consider on how we're going to hold our meetings while maintaining the necessary precautions and privacy for the actual business done in the police department. It's very important, obviously. Oh. Uh, for the discussion at some point, are you sure? Yeah. Is this problematic to have it up here? Well, we have to fight to get this room to ensure that it's available. Oh, it's not fight, but <laughs> we need to make sure that it's available. So this room isn't just willy-nilly. There's other meetings, other uh, town commissions, as well as the Board of Selectmen. Hold their meetings in here. So and, and it, can, it can be a problem because of uh, because of public audience. If it's downstairs, we can't have it, you know, in the training room without having uh, <laughs> other parts of the department covered for security and safety. Sure. So it has to be in a room like this. Uh, and this is the only other room, I guess. Yeah. Otherwise, we have to leave this location and look elsewhere. The library or... But I guess what I'm getting at is, this is workable. Uh, just if the room is available, yeah. it is an option. Yeah, okay. I mean, alternatively, we, we can reconsider uh, resending public audience, if that is something that uh, the commission wants to consider. I know we did that during the Zoom remote meetings. Um, I know other commissions do not hold public audience, so that is something to consider. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and that concludes my report. I'll turn it over to the chief for his report. Thank you, Commissioner Caulfield. Uh, just a quick update on personnel. Uh, two officers uh, have been on leave due to injuries for a couple of months now, and they are not expected to return for another couple of months, but uh, they are both uh, progressing as expected. We hope that they can return soon. Officer Kyle Colby was hired in July by the commission. Uh, he has completed his comparable in-house certification training uh, through the state, and he's currently in our field training program and doing well. So we expect him to be out in a solo capacity in roughly six weeks uh, to eight weeks. Uh, one dispatcher has been on extended medical leave, and we're hoping for a return very soon. And since our last meeting, dispatcher Brennan Halshed successfully completed the dispatch training program and has been assigned to a ship and he's doing very well. Uh, just a quick update on the motor vehicle thefts in town. Since our last meeting, there have been two additional motor vehicle thefts, so we're up to nine uh, for this year. Uh, we're gonna continue to ask the community to lock their vehicles, to not leave access to their keys or their key fob in or around their vehicles, and do not leave personal belongings in there. We also ask that you don't have to use any suspicious activity. You can call 911 for an emergency or if you want to report something that is happening uh, in the past, or I'm sorry, has happened in the past, then they can use the routine line of 658-3100. Uh, we also recommend that you do not engage any person who is attempting to commit a property crime. Uh, leave that up to us. Be a good witness and give us a call. Uh, that is all that I have from our report. Okay. We also have the consolidated monthly report for June. <coughs> questions, thoughts, concerns? I had a question. I noticed our fingerprints went through the roof. Is that just extra efficiency or <laughs> more? We're trying still to get through the massive number of pistol permit applications. So we, um, so we're using other personnel and just trying to get people through as quickly as we can. When 
when the police department opened up for free access and not by appointment, we had another influx of, of people from then looking for press. And then we also have the preliminary monthly activity report. Any questions about that? Okay, I have a question. <laughs> In the, uh, oh God, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Ouch! In the uh, general fund, I know that we, the special duty fund is zeroed out. Is that the administrative vehicles purchase, or is that, no, like we used 100% of it? And the general fund under special duty. It's like the sixth line yeah. down. The special duty fund is, is a fund that they use. It's not a, uh, a funded account for us. It's a fund that they use for paying for private duty jobs. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, so sometimes that's up, sometimes it's down. Okay. It's nothing that's been allocated. Sometimes you'll see money in there, sometimes you won't. Okay. So nothing that nothing. we have control over spending is strictly an accounting okay. measure for gotcha. finance. Right. And question on, the, uh, on that budget report. So are there any numbers that are out of, out of whack in your mind? And, and then as a follow-up, uh, I see in many cases we have zero percent executed uh, and I'm wondering if you know are, are we on track uh, to execute uh, sure if yep. we need to yep so uh, one it's a new kind of a new system that we're getting used to uh, this is a printout for um, July uh, we are on track often what happens is a lot of our regular or annual bills come in at a certain time of the year, and then all of a sudden you're, you're up to like 97%, you know, executed out of that fund. Other ones are spread out throughout the year. Uh, so, for example, equipment for, for cruisers. Um, sometimes that equipment breaks. So, so we end up maybe buying some in October, or we buy some in January, and it's spread out. Spread out, yeah. Yeah, so it definitely varies, but we can be very confident that certain bills will come in uh, some of our contractual services will come in on a regular basis, and it's usually the first part of the year. But, but everything looks like it's on. But right now, there's nothing that's uh, under executed in your mind. That's a that's a problem. Correct. Yeah. yeah. One month in, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then let me back up to uh, the consolidated, if I can. Uh, I see that the the training and the overtime, you know, th those numbers are plussed up. I would expect that just coming out of the, you know, a bigger COVID year. Is that is that uh, kind of your assessment of why that's the case, and is it a good thing? Um, that use of that time is yeah. Up those, those numbers are those numbers are up from the previous uh, you know previous year or previous cycle. Yeah. Well, you know, we we had a difficult time using vacation time and compensatory time you know, during the year because of COVID. Um, you know, people aren't traveling. You know, so there, we didn't have that many more carryovers than, than the year before, but you know, a lot of people hold on to their time in hopes of being able to, to, uh, to be able to travel, hopefully in better times. Yeah. Um, but it seems about right. It does fluctuate. It kind of goes, kind of goes up and down. Okay. Fair enough. One, uh, one trick that uh, I think we used to have under some old reports, if, if you could add a, I don't know if you can add a column to this or not, but it would help uh, answer your, your question if there's a further column here which just stated the percent of the year that's gone by. So it's a quickly you can you, know, you can match the percent of funding used with the percent of time gone sure. by. So you know, you know, at least if things are spread out over 12 months, whether they're uh, short or, or overfunded or whatever have you, but it's helpful. It is, and I don't, I don't not know if that can be added to that, but it is certainly helpful. Or at least at, at the top, you know, somewhere around here, so that, you know, you know we're, what, five, 50 seconds, or whatever the percentage that is. It's just helpful. I don't, I don't think it's a real eye test otherwise, but, you know, it would be, it would be helpful. Any other questions about any of the reports? All right, the next item on our agenda is new business, a recommendation for the candidates for lieutenant and sergeant. I will turn it over to the chief. Okay. So my first recommendation is for the promotion to lieutenant. Brad Chase is sitting two over from me, currently a sergeant. <coughs> Brad joined the department in May 2006. 
He was immediately recognized for his knowledge and understanding, reasoning, his community policing philosophy, and his ability to teach. After three years on patrol, he became a field training officer and instructed new recruits. He expanded the breadth of instruction department-wide in areas of force, response to aggression, and resistance, and use of equipment. Brad has been a member of the Honor Guard and a child safety seat technician since 2008, and a member of the Regional Emergency Services Team since 2012. He held the school resource officer assignment at the high school from 2011 until 2014, strengthening our connections and services to the community through students, their families, and school employees. Brad was promoted to sergeant in 2018. He continued instruction and field training supervision within the department, but more importantly, provided guidance, direction, and opportunities on a daily basis while performing the responsibilities of a sergeant. He challenges himself physically and mentally all the time. He achieved a master's degree and MBA from the University of Hartford in 2018 while managing his personal and professional obligations. In addition to the valued qualities already spoken about, Brad has followership, many years of formal and informal leadership, benevolence, passion, empathy, a calming demeanor, and, ex and experiences that have proved him not only to be suitable, but highly qualified for a position in command staff. He is very self-motivated. It is my recommendation that you promote Sergeant Brad Chase to the position of lieutenant, effective tomorrow, August 24, 2021. Thank you. Chief. Right now, August 24, I forget that. Uh, welcome. Congratulations. Um, what is your, I'm just going to start. What, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to start. You're the chair. I'm going to start. Please do. Uh, what is your biggest success in your current position? My biggest su success, I would say, is the, the success of our team. I, I'm currently assigned to the, the B squad shift, which is our second shift uh, squad, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, and I get the, the satisfaction of seeing others grow professionally and, and personally in both their careers and their, their own personal lives. Uh, so for me, that would be, uh, I'd say that'd be my big, biggest success uh, is because we have a very successful team. And that's a credit to the, the people that uh, make up our team, the people that I work with. Thank you. Now, I'll turn it over. I'll start with Terry. She may. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Sergeant Chase and I have known each other a very long time, especially from my time with the ambulance. And I've always thought that he was obviously more than competent, especially when he's assisting with the ambulance. My interaction with him has all been positive, and nothing has changed that. I uh, have no questions for him. Thank you. Commissioner Graham. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, so, uh, first I want to say thank you for your service that you've done to the town. Um, so far, it's, it's um, impeccable with your resume. Thank yes, you. And he speaks really highly of you. So, a question I have for you is what are you going to do different um, with this new position? Different. I would think that I would like to do nothing different. I would like to try to uh, continue to, to grow personally and professionally uh, and try my best to, uh, again, represent the, the town, deliver the best quality of service to the town possible. Uh, and with this next position, is going to come more responsibility. And I, I'm looking forward to, to the challenge. But I, I don't think that I would necessarily do anything differently. Um, I would want to continue to uh, to learn and grow. And if that journey brings me to uh, something that I think would, uh, if I have to take maybe take a, a little bit of a different pro approach or something, that's something that I'm very open-minded to. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that uh, I think that the, you know along the journey, uh, I would you know be, be more than open-minded to uh, maybe changing a, a few a few things. Okay, so then a follow-up would be, what do you think would be your biggest challenge in this position? Well, the biggest challenge for me would be uh, that it's going to be a little bit of a different, uh, a different feel in the position. I'm so used to over the last 15 years of being on, on the road, on patrol, and responding to calls for service, and being there uh, right <coughs> on that, that front line, and being able to, to meet with people, and and uh, help them with the different situations uh, that they that they require, and provide that quality of service to them. 
um, as a lieutenant, I'm still going to have that opportunity, and I'm going to make uh, make it a point to 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 get out and still be um, doing the community and provide that quality of service. Uh, but it is going to be a little bit of a uh, a different different feel for me of being in more of an administrative position. But it's a challenge that I'm looking forward to, and it's something that uh, that I welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Yeah, yeah Sergeant, you you've been here now 15 years, right? Yes. Uh, not to put you on the spot or anything, but is there uh, anything that you feel the department needs that it doesn't have right now in terms of equipment or training or anything at all? That, I think the most important uh, resource that, that the agency has is, uh, are, the, are the people. Mm -hmm. And the, the people that we have working at this agency providing the, the service to the public could not be any better. And I I've, couldn't be more proud to be, to be a part of this team. Uh, so to answer that question, I think we have uh, I don't want to overstep, uh, overstep my bounds, uh, but I think I want to focus on, on, the, on everything that we do have, and uh, that is uh, the, the personnel and uh, the, the quality of service that we provide to the, the town of Simsbury, um, I'm very proud of. What is, what is your personal long-term goal for yourself? I mean, what, would you like to, what would you like to be 15 years from now? You know? uh, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great question. Uh, this, this, uh, I can tell you that um, right now, I have a, a, an amazing challenge right in front of me, um, potentially, uh, with, with all of your approval, beginning tomorrow. Beginning tomorrow. And uh, that's where I have my sights set on at the moment, and that's what I'm looking forward to at the moment. Uh, Fifteen years from now, um, I can tell you that um, this is more on the pers personal side than it is maybe professionally. Um, I have four young children, all boys, and uh, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about 50, <laughs> they're, they're six, four, two, and uh, six weeks. So uh, what, the first thing I think of when you ask me uh, um, 15 years from now, I can't help it, but in my heart, the first thing I think about is, uh, is them, them growing up. And that in, in addition to, to our family, my family here at the Simsbury Police Department in the town of Simsbury, um, you know, I, I, that, that's the first thing that comes to mind is uh, my family at home as well. So that you ask him that, that's what comes to mind. Good so for them, for them to grow up and be uh, uh, successful, uh, successful adults, that would be uh, my goal. Good answer, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, so I wanna echo, echo my fellow commissioners here. Thank you for your 15 years of service. Thank uh, you, same to you. Um, hey, so I'm looking at, at your education uh, and your background there, very impressive. Do you have additional educational goals that, uh, that you're trying to chip away at here? Uh, just, just professional development, just yeah. professional development, and so that I can make myself more well-rounded and make myself uh, a better team player to the to the agency, and so that we could, uh, you know, continue to grow and, and move forward. Um, but no, no uh, formal schooling at this point, which, which is a good answer if that's if that is your uh, answer. To, to be honest with you, I and I don't know if uh, <laughs> the word the word that comes to mind is it, is not what I want to say, but I, I tend to be more of a. Uh, I don't want to say a bookworm, but I, I enjoy education. I really truly enjoy it. So if there was never an opportunity, um, I would I would always be looking to pursue additional education. I can be honest and, and kind of uh, commissioner along. Um, it'd be along the same uh, lines of what we were talking about a moment ago. I I feel that there's only only so much time in the day, and I have to. I I've, I've thought about it. I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't thinking about more education, but. Um, my responsibilities to my family, my children, and being a father, and my responsibilities here in my role as a, a supervisor and a, a member of uh, the Simsbury Police Department um, have ha uh, convinced me to pump the brakes on taking any more additional uh, yeah. challenges in the realm of education. Great. That, that's all I was getting at was your <laughs> extracurriculars when you're taking on a new task here. Yeah. Uh, and, and four kids, and it sounds like you've got weapons training curriculum getting mm -hmm. set up for them as well. Yes. So. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Good on you. All right, uh, I've got nothing further. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Have you ever rescued someone from a bear? <laughs> uh, There's no wrong answer, I'm just a curiosity thing. I don't know if I would say rescued, but I have had uh, many, many encounters with, uh, with the wonderful bears in, uh, in our community. Um, there, was, there was an instance where there, uh, there was uh, uh, an individual who uh, had some close encounters with a bear, and, and I'd like to feel that, uh, that I did help them with that, uh, but uh, I, I don't know if, I, if you would say rescued. Sounds like me. <laughs> Everyone heard that. He rescued someone from a bear. <laughs> Throwing that out there. Um, thank you. 
Now, procedurally, do you want, I'm going to defer to you, do you want us to kick him out and discuss, or would you rather us speak with the next candidate? I, I have no preference, so whatever you're more comfortable with. I think it's easier to kick them both out at the same time then. So, okay. if you could present your next candidate, please. Okay, all right. So, Justin Johnson is here to my immediate right. Uh, Justin came to the police department in 2015 with an impressive collegiate education and athletic career. He achieved a Master's of Science in Homeland Security with a concentration in leadership from Saudi Regina University where he played football for four years. Over the last six years, Justin has been assigned to the patrol division. I would describe Justin as nothing but a true gentleman. He has a way of always delivering service in a friendly, compassionate, and understanding manner. Whether the interaction is with a motorist, a person seeking information, a complainant, a victim, a suspect, or an arrestee. Justin treats everyone with a high degree of respect and care. He is extremely knowledgeable, a go-to member of the department, and very reliable. He is self-motivated, a problem solver, and a significant support for his coworkers. He's a field training instructor as well as a department instructor for use of force options, de-escalation, and equipment. He has built quite a positive reputation in town uh, and among his co-workers and always sets an exceptional example. His history of excellence, loyalty, and his personality make him a great informal leader and the reasons why I recommend that you promote Officer Justin to Sergeant effective tomorrow, August 24th, 2020. Thank you. Let's start again. So I'll ask you the same question. What is your biggest success at your current position? Uh, you know, I hate to echo Sergeant Chase here, but uh, you know, as a field training officer, um, when you're training an officer and you're seeing them progress, uh, that's really rewarding. Um, but also kind of you know, something new too. Um, it's just uh, you know, growing with the department. Um, we see the ebbs and flows in law enforcement and continuing to have that, uh, that foresight and integrating it into what we're doing day to day. Um, I think that's very important as well. What position did you play? I was a right tackle. I, I went to the University of Miami. I'm a football fan, so okay. I just had to ask. Um, you, I'm going to mix it up. No. No. <laughs> that was the kicker. Okay. Um, I'm going to mix it up and start at this end now. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, God. Oh, oh. Well, um, uh, I have uh, lived in this town for oh, many years, many, many years. I've been practically a native, I suppose, in some sense. But I think there were 6,800 people in Simsbury when we moved here. And now it's, what, close to 25,000? And I've heard all kinds of comments from all kinds of people about all kinds of things. You heard some earlier tonight, you know, and, which is always interesting. Um, but. Uh, uh, you're the one patrol person that I've heard uh, things about that I've never heard anything negative, and I've only heard good things that back you, echo what you said, Chief. Um, but it, it, it leads me to a question that's uh, somewhat hard to ask, and it's a little embarrassing in some, in some forms, but is there anything, if you were sitting up here and there was an interview there, interview person, what is there perhaps in your background that you think we should know about uh, about you as we consider this promotion? Is there anything that lurks in the background somewhere? It's a tough question, but you know. Um, no, sir. There's nothing that lurks in the background. <laughs> so, <laughs> Any bears? Any bears? <laughs> well done. Well, we wanted to know about the right tackle position. Maybe there's a block that you wanted to get after. <laughs> there's always a few you wish to get after. Yeah. Commander, cheers. All right. Hey, uh, how about the routine here? What sort of uh, what sort of hours are you looking at now and, and going forward? Does that change, uh, you know, your your level of commitment or your ability to perform or anything of that nature? Um, no, sir. So I'm currently assigned to the, the evening shift. Um, you know, potentially um, I might be going to a, a different shift, um, but whatever sacrifices need to be made in, the, in my personal life, I'd be willing to do. So that's not a problem at all. Yeah. Great. And, and uh, same sort of thing about, you know, your future and looking at the police force and, and uh, you know, being a member here. Um, what's the five year, what's five years look like for you now? Uh, you know, is it, is it continuing to climb the ladder or are you going to, uh, are there certain 
professional goals that you want to hit that, uh, that we, we should be aware of? You know, I think first and foremost, um, something I'm focused on, if given the opportunity, is just to, uh, to be the best supervisor that I could be. Um, so obviously within this room, I've had a lot of great role models and mentors. So I'm looking forward to uh, integrating all the good things that they've done into uh, hopefully my leadership styles if given the opportunity. Fair enough. I like it. Commissioner Brandt. Hello. Um, so I've actually seen um, him in action before. So um, <laughs> everything that you said in your, um, in your recommendation is true. So I actually don't have any that's my line. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think will be your biggest challenge other than the beers? Um, I, I think my probably the biggest challenge would just be, you know, kind of understanding and learning all the nuances of a new position. Um, taking the jump from a patrol officer to potentially a supervisor is, is kind of a big one. It's a change of roles and responsibility. Um, so that's probably the, the biggest hurdle. Um, you know, but. Like I said, I've had a lot of great mentors um, so far, so I think uh, I have nothing but confidence moving forward. Awesome. Just a, a quick question. You, you started with the Marshal Service. What brought you to Simsbury? That's a really good question. Um, so when I had that internship, it was kind of a, it was very broad in scope, and it wasn't really specific enough. Um, so a lot of the, the marshals that I did have the opportunity to kind of shadow and speak with, um, they kind of steered me in this direction. Um, from what I was told was they have a lot of gratification in what they do, but they wish that they could do more, you know, in terms of, you know, helping out others or, you know, affecting someone's life in a positive manner. Um, they're kind of removed. We're just kind of dealing with things well after the fact. Whereas a police officer, you're kind of specifically there in that time and in that um, so that was something that kind of resonated with me, and you know, obviously I prefer to go this route as opposed to the route. And did you grow up in Connecticut or Massachusetts, or what, no, again, I, what brought you to Connecticut? Uh, I grew up in Connecticut. Okay. Well, you have a very, very impressive resume, and, and thank you for taking this opportunity for the promotion. Thank you, sir. Does anyone have any questions for either candidate? I have no further questions. All right. In that case. Um, Hi, Kelsey, could you please work with me? <laughs> <laughs> I can't look anymore on Zoom, so I can't click them out anymore. Don't <laughs> 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 disappear. <laughs> All right, so we will start with Bradford Chase, the candidate for lieutenant. Make a motion to pro to approve this promotion to lieutenant. Second that motion. Any discussion? I was impressed. I think it's a good choice. I appreciate the chief's recommendation. All in favor of approving the promotion of Bradford Chase to lieutenant, effective August 24th. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Next. Um, on the candidate of Justin Johnson for promotion to sergeant. I would like to move. move. I move that we promote you up to Officer Johnson to sergeant effective tomorrow. Do I have a second? I have a second for that motion. Do we have any discussion? I just want to say that he, how calm he is sitting here is like me, how calm he is when he's out in the community. So I'm glad that um, I can do that. I think it's a great choice. I appreciate that you all have known our candidates throughout this process. It, it, it's a, a good sign of the quality of candidates we have in the department. Okay. Hey, I'll, I'll echo that. that I mean, great, uh, great folks here uh, that continue to come forward uh, to serve serve the community. It's it's awesome. All right. In that case, I uh, all in favor of approving the motion to promote Sergeant. To Sergeant Justin Johnson, effective August 24th. Say yeah. aye. 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 Also approved unanimously. Right back. Chief, I like how uh, we didn't get uh, uh, we didn't get the future lieutenant to crack there. He he had no mm -hmm. if he was chief or day. He didn't uh, right. <laughs> 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 <Very well. laughs> 
Yeah. 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 I regret to inform you <laughs> that we have decided to accept the Chief's nomination to promote you, Sergeant Bradford Chase, to Lieutenant, and you, Officer Justin Johnson, to Sergeant. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. to the ex next item of our agenda. Our agenda is the presentation on body cameras. Do you need a minute to set up? Yes. Awesome. All right. So as uh, Lieutenant Christian is setting up, um, I will just give you a real brief. Um, our body cameras, as you're all uh, aware, were purchased uh, last year, uh, last calendar year. Um, they've been in use by most members of this department since July 2nd uh, of this year. The only members who have not received the training are the two members who have been out on leave for a couple months and two members who are in the police academy right now. All four of those members, when they return to the police department, will receive that training right away and will be wearing the cameras uh, right away. Um, we have found the camera implementation to be smooth and um, I Kudos to Lieutenant Christian uh, and his group for making this very smooth. The training aspect, um, the purchasing aspect, and, and everything along with it has been um, very nice. Also, so I included in this um, a little, just a quick brief uh, summary of our fleet cameras as well, because we were implemented those at around the same time, our new fleet cameras. Um, this should be very brief. Um, so this is a picture of our current body camera, the one that you see all of us wearing today. Um, just some of the highlights with it, it can record for 12 hours, it captures 30 frames per second, which is comparable to the human eye, so it captures very close to what the, uh, the officer sees. It's got enabled GPS, um, and you can play multi, multiple cameras back at the same time, and we'll see that a little bit later in the presentation. I'll go through these pretty quick. Um, it's just a description of the buttons and their functions on the device. At the top, there's a power button. On the front, it's called the event button. That's how you would turn it on and off or to start a recording and stop a recording. Those little lights around the outside are called uh, triad LEDs. And the different colored lights tell you what the unit is doing. If it was in the dock and uploading or downloading the firmware. There's obviously the camera in the front, and there's a speaker on the side of the front as well. These cameras are unique in that they have four microphones built into them, so the four microphones working together help prevent any wind distortion or rustling of noises. So there's two on the front, and then this picture shows two on the bottom. And also on the bottom is a USB-C connector. That's where it gets charged and downloads the videos when it's placed in the dock and uploads new firmware or updates to the camera as necessary. On the top of the camera, you can see there's an LED display that you can see if you're recording or not. It shows the battery life, and it can show if your camera is paired to your uh, fleet camera, which is your dash camera. Um, on the side, there's a volume up, a volume down, in the middle, there's a selection button and a program button. Program button is used basically to pair your body camera with your fleet or car camera. And on the back in the center, there's a mount, which is a universal mount for multiple uh, mounting options, and then a heat sink, which is on up, to, up and down of it, which basically allows the camera to breathe, because with any computer or laptop, we all know they need a lot of air or the overheat. So some of the operating uh, functions of it are both our camera, our body cameras, and our dash cameras have a buffering mode of 30 seconds. So what that means is when you activate it, or when it's activated automatically, and we'll get back into that in a little bit, it automatically goes back 30 seconds before it was activated and captures the video from that 30 seconds before, but no audio. 
So if you were, if the officer was parked at a, a, a red light and they observed a red light violation in front of them, when they activated their lights, it would hopefully capture the red light violation, but just without the audio. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a event button where you can start uh, recording, which is on the front. You also would use that to stop. Um, if the officers need to have an officer conference at any time of the call, they can actually mute the audio of their uh, body worn camera. And what is written in our policy is that they'll say before they do it, we're going to have an officer conference. They'll go ahead and mute their camera, discuss whatever they have to discuss, um, and then turn it back on so it's playing again and say end of officer conference so there's clear transparency of what's going on. Um, there's also a select, we talked about the select button for that. We've also enabled on our devices stealth mode for our officers to use so that would be in case they're going in to clear a house or search a house. We wouldn't want any of the lights on the front or any of the noises that it makes to give away their position or to alert someone inside there that they're coming. So they can do that and turn it on and off um, as necessary. And then we talked about before pairing to pair your body camera so it plays in coordination and the time runs uh, coordinated with your fleet camera. Some of the different mounts that are available, uh, there's some pictures there. The ones that we are primarily using are the flexible magnet mount um, on the left. It's an extremely strong uh, magnet. It actually takes some people two hands to actually take it apart. It's very, very strong. Um, and then the double molly mount, we're using those on our external um, threat carriers. This is an example of, or a picture of what our docking station looks like. It's a little difficult to see up here because it's, it's so uh, washed out. But in there are all the body cameras and you can see if you were to be a little bit clearer, it, um, it shows that they're all green. So you can see that they're all functioning properly. If for some reason one of those was red, or a different color recycling, it would mean that it's either having an upload or a download or a firmware um, reset. And these are the colors, um, basically that would flash yellow, red, cycling yellow, uh, green, white, and so on. We haven't had really any need to clean them yet, but we have uh, isopropyl alcohol wipes to clean the camera lens if necessary. And that's basically a rundown on the body camera by itself. I'll show you guys a nice video um, right after I talk about the fleet, which should be another couple minutes. So these are fleet cameras. That's a picture of the inside of the cruiser where all the equipment is for our fleet cameras. You see, it it's, looks very complicated. Um, the fleet cameras have the ability to zoom in on license plates and make them readable from 30 feet away. Um, the officers can review the video on their MDTs or their computers in the cruiser. And we have two access points now at the PD, one on the north side and one on the south side. So all the video from the cruiser cameras gets uploaded via Wi-Fi when the officer comes into the PD, and it goes up to the cloud um, that way. <clears throat> the uh, body cameras have to be docked in those docks that we saw earlier for, the, for their videos to be uploaded. Uh, the rear camera in the car is enabled with uh, infrared video, so it uh, has greater visibility and low light of the prisoner cage, the prisoner um, space in the cruiser. And the front camera is obviously not uh, infrared because you want it to be as close to what the officer can see as possible. Two officers can sign in at a time to the, the MDT, which is great because we have a lot of officers sometimes on FTO or training. So the evidence that is captured can be assigned to both of those officers and not just one. Um, and we have some automatic recording devices or automatic triggers that trigger recording. So anytime the officer activates their overhead lights in the cruiser, it would trigger a recording. Um, anytime they re reach a certain maximum speed, it would trigger it. Or a sudden deceleration, which would be significant with an accident, would trigger it automatically. Um, that's a picture of the front camera from inside the car. And just a sample view, it's difficult to see because of the lights in here, but a sample view of what you can see from it. 
And then the rear camera, it's difficult, I'm sorry, it's difficult to see in here, but it's on the top. And then the infrared view of the back prisoner compartment, obviously in black and white. Um, the officers basically sign in at the beginning of each shift, and if they have their body camera, which they should, they'll pair it to their uh, vehicle. And once it's paired, you'll see the front camera on the left, rear camera on the right saying that it's ready. And if the body camera in this picture was paired, it would be another one showing that your body camera is paired and active as well. Uh, after recording, the officers could review the video if necessary. They are allowed to um, input the incident number. They can put a title for the recording if necessary. And they can choose, they have to choose a category. The categories are preset, predetermined. So there's a motor vehicle stop, um, accident, so on and so forth. And the retention periods um, that we have set up will automatically purge those videos when the retention guidelines um, say that they should be purged. Um, if for some reason we need to maintain one and preserve it because it was a use of force incident, we can obviously go in and make sure that that is never important. Um, Axon Capture is a program that our detectives are starting to use. It allows them on their department uh, cell phone to take photos, record an audio or a video, and then they can use that and attach the metadata and upload it right to their evidence.com um, account. And then one of the next things is Axon Citizen. We've just been getting into this. It's on the same thing, or the same platform as the Axon, um, Axon Capture. And I think we're going to start using this a lot more. It will allow an officer to send a, a text message or an email to a victim or a complainant that has evidence that they want to share with us. For instance, if they have a ring camera, and we need to grab that ring video and they're going to share it with us. The officer can send them a secure text message or phone, uh, text message or email, and the citizen would get it. It would look something similar to this. They would click on it and then upload, the, upload their video, and it would go right to our evidence, tagged with the incident number and category. Um, and the great part about that is every gas station or every business has a different video player and recording system and we've historically had to go and download each player for those systems and have to download each player and put it on our computer and then put the evidence on our computer to, to view it this when they upload it the program changes it automatically so you can view it on any computer without uploading those programs to your computer so it's a lot safer to um cyber wise that's the end of the presentation for the slides, but have some video I'd like to show unless you have any questions before that. Matt, does everybody use the same camera every day? Yes. Um, the only time that they wouldn't would be if one of them was out for service or defective, or if for some reason the battery was running low and they didn't charge it, we could reassign another one. We have some spares. Just so I was going to ask about inventory. Are all our vehicles fleeted up, and, uh, and does every officer have a, a body cam? Every officer has a body camera, and our nine patrol vehicles are uh, equipped with the, the fleet device. And what's our maintenance contract look like with these? Or is there is there something? Uh, you talked about spares, so I, I assume there's. So they're 100% covered under warranty for five years. In year two or 2.5, depending upon fleet or body camera, they'll automatically give us new ones. Um, so if the technology improves by then, we'll get that new technology. And then in year five, we'll get a refresh again of the new technology. And then we'll have to redo the contract. Are these axons kind of industry st standard across the across the country? Or are they, uh, you know, I, mean, they're, I assume there's many different brands, but... Uh, there, there are many brands. I would say this is the cats uh, gold standard. Yeah. I don't want to... <clears throat> And then you talked about the purge function. Is there, you know, like coming from the Navy, uh, we would call it uh, sailor proof, you know, where we can't purge the material. Uh, you know, I know we can edit it. Is there, uh, and you talked a little bit about purge, but is there something that prevents officers from accidentally deleting video that they don't want to delete? Uh, that yes. sort of thing. So officers cannot delete video. 
the only people that can delete the video are administrators. And in that capacity as well, everyone is notified when that were to happen. And you still have 30 days from after you hit delete to undelete it. So it's really much not an issue. Yeah, great. And I would, I would just clarify, editing is not what we would be doing with the video. We would still maintain the original evidence and redact another copy. So we still have the, the original down term, I mean, like labeling, uh, yeah. that sort of thing that yeah. you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of user friendly, so do you just tap it and it comes on? Um, like you don't have to sit and like press a hard. You know, just just double tap. Double tap. I hope this isn't washed out with the uh, the light. We can fix that. <laughs> so this is an example of an officer on a motor vehicle stop. Um, you can play back multiple cameras at the same time, so you see the officer's body camera in the top left, his front cruiser camera in the top right, and then the rear uh, prisoner uh, camera at the bottom. Um, as we said before, it goes back 30 seconds from when the activation occurs to capture the video. So he just activated it, it went back, that's why we're watching nothing. He's going to stop the speeder on Wilkett Road. Three other stops, same location. So the redaction has the ability to obviously uh, hide the, the license plate that you just called in. If you look at the license plate on the car in the top right, it's blacked out, so we can't see it right now. Good morning, sir. Fans can obviously blur out. I'm sure it's fine, I'll double check if the next one is expired. Oh, it should be the same one, and then this one's good to go. Yeah, exactly. Should be the same one. Oh, good. I'll get you out of here with a little more in a little bit, okay? Hey, sir. So it turns out you gave him a good morning. <laughs> you like to watch the rest of it. We can do that for each other. One more. One more. <laughs> this next one is it shows multiple officers responding to the same call. Actually, that's one of the officers in the room here. Um, it's a motor vehicle accident. Um, the top two boxes are uh, that officer's body camera and his dash camera. And actually, we have two officers in the room. The bottom two videos are from one officer's, another officer's dash camera and another officer's body camera. So we're watching four officers' point of view here responding to the same motor vehicle accident on uh, Terrafer Road by Curtis Park. The, the audio is associated with the body camera on the top left, which is why we're not hearing the, um, the audio now from the officer in the bottom the bottom left, he's already responding lights and sirens to this uh, accident. So it's neat how they all sync up so you can see what's happening at the same time for each officer's point of view. So in the bottom left, we have the officer going north on Hot Meadow Street. In the top two boxes, the officer's going south on Hot Meadow Street. And they'll approach um, Route 315 or Terrafield Road in a minute. And you'll see, when they turn the corner, the traffic light's already out because of this accident. Just neat to see the coming from both directions going to a scene. Thank you. 
watching the video. Right? You could also watch it one by one, <laughs> not watch the four in a, in a, in a segment. I just trying to showcase the capabilities. <laughs> Somebody come in, sit at quarry, close down quarry, and uh, anyone have any questions? I, I would like to say thank you from myself and, and I don't like to say from the chief, but for basically spearheading uh, us getting body cameras for the last couple of years and being on top of that. And I think everyone really appreciates it, and we've seen affect our policing tenfold already. And I can't wait to see what else. Positively. Right. Pos positively, right. correct. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. It's a terrific training aid. Uh, I mean, and capturing obviously what happened, but uh, the training value is phenomenal. Good stuff. I appreciate it. I know we were working on that from the way back when I joined the commission, so it's nice to see it all finally come to fruition and into a nice streamlined process that seems to be working for you all as well as the community. Anybody have any questions? No. Anybody else? No, just, uh, I, I'm just glad it's up running and it's, it's going well because there was a long fight to get that approved. And you know, there's a certain amount of attention to funding and certain other things, but uh, good. I'm glad it's up and running and that you're pleased with it. In that case, does anyone have any uh, motions I'd like to make, Mr. Long? Oh, uh, well, in that case, I, I'd like to move that we uh, perhaps adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Adjourned at 634.